I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Uh, I'm being told by people in my comments section that a while back I promised to make a video about how to set up the dynamic filter in Betaflight 3.2. Um, and I guess I forgot that I promised to do that. It, it's a little, I mean, it just, the thing is, I, it, there's, not, there's not that much to it. So I kind of probably overlooked it because I thought, like, really, what is there to it? But that's a tendency that I have to go, what are you talking about? It's so simple. You don't need to make a video about this. The, the earliest example of this was when I made a video about how to calibrate your ESCs, which actually is one of my most popular videos to date. So, yeah, okay. Maybe things aren't as simple as I imagine them to be sometimes. So this is the video about how to set up the dynamic filter in Betaflight. Stay tuned. So the first thing you're going to do to set up the dynamic filter in Betaflight 3.2 is you're going to go to the configuration tab and you are going to enable <laughs> the dynamic filter. And you're going to enable that option and you're going to hit save and reboot. Now when you do that, if you are on an F3 board, then you also need to make sure that your gyro update and your PID loop frequency are no higher than 4K and 4K. The, uh, the dynamic filter is processor intensive and running, try, trying to run the loop faster, like if you want to run it at 8K, 8K, uh, then that's going to overwhelm the processor. It's a little bit misleading because if you actually set an F3 board to 8K and 8K and you enable the dynamic filter, the CPU load down here at the bottom of the screen will, it usually will hover around 50% and that's actually kind of supposed to be fine, but the Betaflight devs have recommended that you run 4K, 4K maximum when you're using the dynamic filter on an F3 because there can be spikes in the utilization that can cause problems. Some people run 8K, 8K and get away with it, but I don't think there's actually that much flight difference between 8K and 4K. And if that's what the devs recommend, that's what I recommend as well. So, uh, by the way, if you're on an F4 or an F7 board, then you can run as fast as you want, really. 8K, 8K is no problem. So you enable dynamic filter. Then you're going to go uh, to the PID tuning tab and you're going to go to the filter settings. Now, in between each of these steps, you're going to go and fly the quad and see if anything bad has started to happen. The number one bad thing that you're looking for is hot motors, but you can also listen for the sound of D-term oscillation, a kind of a trilling oscillation. Increased video noise might be another thing that you'd see, or worst case scenario is that the quadcopter just, you do a spin of death and you fall into the ground because the motors desync because the motor signal got too noisy. So in between each of these steps, go fly and don't just sort of do a little test hover. I mean, start with a little test hover, but fly a little bit aggressively and try and try and really heat your motors up. If you land the quad and the motors are hot, you need to stop and back up and reassess. Everything we're doing is removing filtering, and when you remove filtering, you get more motor noise, and that can result in hot motors. The other question people ask at this point is, how hot is too hot? And the answer, as a rule of thumb, is if you pinch the motor with your fingers and you can comfortably leave the, just pinch it as long as you want, then you're fine. And if you pinch the motor with your fingers and it's kind of uncomfortable, you're on the edge. And if you pinch the motor with your fingers and you're like, oh, oh, and you have to really struggle to keep touching it, you really kind of want to take your hand away, that to me is too hot. You need to back up. What you're worried about is that a sudden change in the vibration characteristics of the quad will make the noise profile much worse and then we'll go from, oh, that's a little hot, to a smoked motor. And the most common way that happens is you break a prop. And in that half a second before you disarm, the prop is all making a bunch of noise and you smoke a motor. Okay? So every step, you check for hot motors. You fly the quad, you check for hot motors. Here are the steps. Number one, you change from bi-quad to PT1. Number two, you disable gyro notch filter one. Number three, you disable gyro notch filter two. And number four, you disable the D-term notch. Okay? Those are the steps in between each one. You fly and you look for hot motors, though. Most people, in my experience, I think pretty much everybody, almost everybody can get away with changing from bi-quad to PT1. And then most people, I'd say, the majority at least, more than half, should be able to get rid of the gyro notch filters. 
Disabling the D-term notch is really risky though. Uh, I actually don't disable the D-term notch on a lot of my quads unless it's a quad I'm really tuning to the nth degree. Um, a lot of the quads I get is I'll get a quad maybe for review or I'll do a build and I'll kind of do a rough tune, but I won't really like, mm, this is my quad, tune it, right? And the, for those quads, I just won't even bother. The, the, the improvement in performance by disabling the D-term notch filter can be substantial. And the improvement in performance, by the way, is much better prop wash handling. But not everybody benefits from this. That's the other thing. Some people find that they do a little bit better with the static notches and the active, the active, uh, the active, uh, the d dynamic filter actually adds a little bit of latency. So you may find that there's a sweet spot. Maybe you would do better with, uh, you know, PT1 and the two gyros and not the dynamic filter. It just depends on how your tune works and how hot your motors get. So that's it. That's how to enable the dynamic notch filter on Betaflight 3.2. It's the same as the filter tuning that we did on Betaflight 3.1. You just add one step to the beginning, turn on the dynamic notch. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.